हेलो एवरीवन मुझे आशा है कि आप सब स्वस्थ एवं सुरक्षित होंगे सो बिना वक्त को बर्बाद किए हुए हम लोग चलते हैं अपने हिंदू पेपर एनालिसिस की ओर सबसे पहले हम आइडेंटिफाई करेंगे कौन से इंपॉर्टेंट न्यूज है इस न्यूज में और उसके बाद हम लोग उसे एनालाइज करेंगे सो दिस इज मंडे मार्च ट्वेंटी एट ट्वेंटी एडिशन ऑफ द हिंदू नॉ लेट्स आइडेंटिफाई द न्यूज रशियन फॉरन मिनिस्टर टू विजिट डेली दिस वीक ओके so there is uh, this visit of russian foreign minister this week focus on oil purchase payment defense supply hurdles okay we just have to know that he is coming nothing more than this fine there is now there is one more news kerala nursery is bounce back on north east rubber wave we'll see what is this news all about fine okay now let's move to the next page there is nothing much related to exam on this page also there is nothing much related to exam on this page also there is nothing much related to exam on this page there is never something related to examination okay there are two editorials the era of unemployed india we'll see what the author want to say i hope this is a good article uh, which may be relevant to our examination we have to see what uh, arguments she put and how we can use those arguments in our examination not more than one or two point will be effective from uh, in case of writing answers from this part okay now let's see poverty rose but income inequality fell fine this is a this is a Thing, uh, this is a uh, uh, thing that should not be like this. If poverty rises, then income inequality also rises, but it has fallen. So we'll see why this paradox is there. Okay, this is, I also ho- I hope that this is also a good article. So we have two articles lined up. Now Ukraine, the pawn power game. We already know this thing. We'll just give it a read. What uh, the author want to say, but more or less it is uh, the thing that we have been discussing so far. Public profit over public health. Now this trips agreement. Uh, we were on uh, COVID-19 uh, vaccination and all those things, and uh, and this is related. This would be related to that thing only. We have to just give it a read because more or less it is it is emerging as an important issue. So WTO as a whole in for our problems becomes important now. Okay, there are nothing much on these pages. Mm, uh, we can uh, we have to see this. and there was a news yesterday or day before yesterday that center is um the law minister has given the statement that center is trying to ease the voting for overseas citizen by including uh, online voting something kind of thing we'll see what it is okay uh, but this is important i think uh, in my opinion why it is important because one it is related to voting so it is important for our for our thriving democracy so this become important for this exam as well now at this page nothing much is there okay In, on this page indian space economy valued at about 37000 crores okay so i hope that this article will give a brief outline it will briefly outline how it has grown and what are the other possibilities okay then uh, states can identify minority government has said we'll see what it is but it feels important it is it may be something related to state list and union list there is this also india fires to surface to surface missile we have to know the names of the missile and uh, what can be the implications during uh, during a war kind of situation but uh, take it that it will it will not come in examination missiles have very less come in examination more than that satellites have come okay in upsc so there is also these are political pages now there is one more one more thing finance fm to attend bimstech some meet we'll see what it is okay sc6 full 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 proof plan to identify sts we'll see what it is uh, we have to see how it is and uh, now there is nothing much on this page there is nothing ever on this page now it is a very sad news our women cricket team has lost yesterday's match and due to that now they are out of the semi final race it's very, it's a very heartbreaking news but okay there is one good news that pv sindhu has won uh, her match yesterday okay so is open match fine okay but hs and lost the men so say pv sindhu clinched her second women title of the season fine now there is nothing much on these pages no either on these and this is a okay so fine we have identified the important news now let's move towards the analysis section so we see that here russian foreign minister has visited uh, to visit delhi this week theek hai so what we see that russian foreign minister will be visiting delhi this week reason simple reason to gain india's support and to increase trade and commerce look 
in international relation i always say that only three things matter national interest national security and the most important thing peace and tranquility or peace and harmony in the region okay and for that only they will come now how far has russia been how far russia is guilty of aggression and all those things does not matter over these three things right that he has taken that country has taken this stand or this country has taken that stance until and unless the national security national interest and peace and tranquility of your region of the belonging region of that country is affected till then no one will uh, take anything very seriously yes they will take their stance that war should never be there because war always leads to crisis right but as far as this visit is concerned what we understand that oil purchases payment and defense supply hurdles these are to be seen and let's see uh, timely delivery of spares and component for uh, the system and use of delay on the way okay for s400 missile system you know uh, that we have purchased s400 system from russia and it is uh, under uh, what we say it is under uh, delivery to india right it is being delivered to india in tranches so uh, we also need the spare spare parts and all those things fine so that will be discussed after apart from that what else will be discussed a ak200 uh, three rifles assault rifles will be discussed because we once we have got ak203 rifles and another tranche that is a larger tranche than initially ordered is in wait right is in process so that will also be discussed and apart from that what else will be discussed rupee ruble payment okay so what three things will be discussed s400 ak203 and rupee ruble payment measures right these three things are uh, will be discussed and these three things are now uh, important aspect of india russia ties it has always been and it will be apart from that what else we can expect to be discussed energy ties right and how many how uh, what will be the discounted rate of energy uh, availability that could be made from russia the coal availability from russia about uh, apart from your uh, petroleum product uh, petroleum crude uh, crude all um, ye yeah, trade fine now let's move further there is nothing more here yes there is this one kerala nursery bounces back on northeast rubble uh, wave now what is happening is that in northeast india fine what uh, there is a this is a season for uh, rubber plantation and uh, people has taken horticulture very seriously there there are schemes running all around uh, northeast eastern uh, northeastern states which is supporting horticulture now what will be the, what how this will, this will benefit kerala look kerala plantation or kerala nursery will will help uh, uh, or not exactly help will give uh, whom will give uh, northeastern states the required seeds right and that will help in rubber plantation over that area alone let's read it riding on plantation wave that is sweeping northeast india the rubber nurseries in kerala are getting the best out of their grow backs after decade long hull lal nah, it is written over here uh, according to official rubber board a whooping 51 lakh rubber sapling sourced from nursery across kerala will be soon be making their way to plantation across northeastern and west bengal region right so what will happen will happen that if this is our this is our india right so in northeast now the question is why not uh, why we had seeing rubber plantation in northeast and the simple answer could be that there is a better uh, climate agro climatic region for rubber plantation okay and uh, why we have in that uh, kerala region because kerala region and northeastern region has very different kind of uh, geo um, uh, agro economic re- uh, agro um, ecological region still the hilly region like cardamom hills mom hills these regions na these regions allow for rubber plantation and nursery from these region will be transplant transporting their seeds or their saplings to this northeastern region this is the main news fine now let's move further there is nothing much here there is nothing much here there is nothing much here the next news is very simple now we'll do the editorial at last let let me first finish the major uh, the minor news that we have so indian economy indian space economy valued at uh, about 37000 crores and this is about 0.25% of gdp yes we have shown a lot of growth but uh, uh, reaching this data was very difficult because uh, the sector is highly unorganized unorganized more than unorganized it is very scattered okay look the space of indian economy in india its size and structure fine this was the name of paper and it says that 
space application accounted for major chunk of this evolving economy which is 75 about 75 percent following by space uh, operations and manufacturing fine so these are the things this is the first attempt to actually value the indian space sector okay there is nothing more in this just remember it is about 37000 crores that is about 0.25% of gdp better data will be to remember this 0.25% of gdp about about state can identify minorities the government has said uh, has given in its affidavit to the supreme court that states have the power to or have the rights to identify minorities why because parliament look here it is the parliament and state legislature have concurrent powers to enact law to provide for protection of minorities and their interest fine so this is in concurrent list remember this concurrent list fine and after that religious and linguistic minorities are spread all over the country and are not related to rest or restricted to any single state or union territory fine therefore it is con in concurrent list look minorities and all those uh, minorities are obviously spread over the entire country so uh, it cannot be a state list per se subject and minority uh, and minority are also concerned some minorities are concerned in some states so it cannot be a overall uh, center means union uh, list subject so it is in uh, your concurrent list right and what is the what is the background for such uh, stance of government why government has to give such a stance it is simple that the government in nine places where followers of hinduism bahamism and judaism are minority can consider laying down guiding lines to identify them as minority communities at state level center told the supreme court okay it has told this matters like declaring the followers of in lakshadweep mizoram nagaland kashmir or natural pradesh punjab and manipur can establish administrator can establish and administer educational institute of their choice in state laying down the guidelines for identification of such minorities in the state level may be considered by the state government concerned okay the government kya bola ki iske karan kya hoga ye article 29 or 30 ko exercise kar sakenge especially article 30 ko fine aur ye kiske against me respond kar raha tha petition filed by advocate that followers of judaism bahamism and hinduism who are real minorities in ladakh mizoram lakshadweep and all those areas cannot establish an administer education institution of their choice so he's saying that he they cannot uh, do this they cannot administer although they are minority so center has said that they will they can identify minority they have the uh, power to identify minority and uh, by identifying by laying the procedure by laying the guidelines for such identification will lead to these minorities establish their educational institution and therefore they can um, they can exercise their article 30 fine india test power fires two surface to air missiles okay this is a simple news uh, two medium range uh, medium range surface to air missile we have tested from again the same place integrated test range at chandipur in orissa the first missile was was medium altitude long range target medium altitude long range target and look it is surface to air fine the so medium altitude okay let me let me create some space to explain this okay let's see now okay so it is a medium altitude and long range look surface to air somewhere here one target is here another target is here another target is here uh, don't take this target another um, we will take a target here okay so this one is your this is medium altitude long range why because this is called range right and this is called altitude so this is medium altitude means but long range and this would be then another and second a low altitude and short range fine so it is less than this so low altitude and short range it will fire like this this is very simple thing okay now let's move further there's one more news india and ue trade pact likely from may one let's see how it develops there's nothing more in that we just have to know that there's a deal with uh, your those country uh, ua uh, fta deal right now let uh, in this article if, uh, Myanmar FM to attend Bimstek meet now only thing that is concerned is who who are the members of my uh, Bimstek and uh, some some very small data some very uh, uh, trivial data about Bimstek like when it was established where it is where the say uh, its uh, headquarters are and all those things right so we'll identify the country name here and we'll uh, we'll search the internet to see uh, what are the various dimensions to it when it was established where is its secretariat and how many meetings have taken place and all those things right so let's see the full form is 
वे ऑफ बंगाल इनिशिएटिव फॉर माई टाइम वे ऑफ बंगाल इनिशिएटिव फॉर माई टाइम साइंस एंड टेक्निकल कोऑपरेशन राइट लेट्स सी हियर बिम्स्टेक फुल फॉर्म इट इज नॉट गिवन ना नो वेयर ओके ओके ऑल यस टेक्नोलॉजिकल ओके लेट मी सर्च फर्स्ट द फुल फॉर्म देन विल विल नो फर्दर बिम्स्टेक कंट्रीज फुल फॉर्म ओके फुल फॉर्म वे ऑफ बंगाल इनिशिएटिव फॉर मल्टी सेक्टोरल टेक्निकल एंड इकोनॉमिक कोऑपरेशन राइट वे ऑफ बंगाल इनिशिएटिव फॉर मल्टी सेक्टोरल एंड टेक्निकल एंड इकोनॉमिक कोऑपरेशन राइट टेक्निकल एंड इकोनॉमिक कोऑपरेशन टेक्निकल एंड इकोनॉमिक कोऑपरेशन ओके नाउ दिस दिस फुल फॉर्म हैज कम केम वंस इन your state pcs and another time in upsc now countries member countries obviously they will be around bay of bengal so let's begin sri lanka india nepal bhutan bangladesh myanmar and thailand fine so these are the member countries now uh, when it was established let's see bimstek established in which year it was established in 1997 by bangkok declaration okay so 1997 bangkok by this year bangkok declaration right bangkok declaration okay now another thing that we headquarter is in dhaka headquarter where it is dhaka Okay, these things that we need to know. Fine. SC six full full non non for identification of scheduled tribes. Why? Now why SC saying this? Now the S judiciary no longer sure of affirm affinity test. Okay, to shift to shift through anthropological ethnological traits. Now what it is saying that affinity test was initially used to identify whether a group is. can we uh, can we classify that st or not but due to intermingling of races and due to intermingling of culture and civilization this affinity test is now failing now let's read it to understand okay about an affinity test used to shift uh, the anthropology uh, link between person of tribe there is the likelihood that contact with other culture migration and moderni modernization would have erased the traditional characteristics of the tribe this is the crux of this uh, article that what is this affinity test affinity test was related to Uh, to distinct culture right uh, of this uh, and distinct uh, uh, traditional culture and characteristics of that tribe but due to what due to uh, phenomena such as coming in contact with other culture migration modernization what had happened these these uh, traits these affinity traits of that uh, of that uh, uh, st uh, of that tribe uh, or of that group of people would have changed over time something some some things have been deleted and other things would have been added therefore this affinity test in present context uh, remains outdated and therefore uh, sc is asking government to um, to make another full proof norm so that identification of st becomes easy right uh, there is nothing more on these pages i don't find anything relevant to our preparation okay now let's move on to the editorial fast and forward to the editorial now we are here yes here it is now there are two uh, two important editorial the era of unemployment unemployed india okay a very good article it has highlighted the problems why unemployment is there and what are the various matrices or, or what are the various gauge of unemployment how we can measure unemployment right look what is the problem that we say that okay unemployment is there in india but how do you know there is unemployment what are your matrices on which you actually measure unemployment right so these this article deals with that only now it begins with uh, the railway agitation episode last uh, to last month there was a episode of railway agitation in uh, parts of bihar uh, on okay by the youth okay it is saying that before pandemic also the nsso has reported about 6.1% unemployment rate this is a very high unemployment rate okay and uh, cmie that is center for monitoring of indian economy says that there are nearly 53 million indians 
हु आर अनएम्प्लॉयड सच ए लार्ज नंबर फिफ्टी थ्री मिलियन इंडियंस मतलब मीन्स फाइव थर्टी लैक्स इंडियंस ओके आर अनएम्प्लॉयड टूडे एंड अ वेरी लार्ज प्रपोर्शन ऑफ देम इज वुमेन द अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट रेट वॉज होवरिंग एट सेवन पॉइंट नाइन परसेंट मीन्स फ्रॉम सिक्स पॉइंट से अबाउट सिक्स परसेंट इट इज सिक्स पॉइंट टू वन परसेंट कीप इट सिक्स परसेंट ओनली ना सिक्स परसेंट इट इज अबाउट एट परसेंट नाउ बाई एंड ऑफ डिसंबर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन एंड नाउ इट First six percent, the nine percent, then six point five percent. It hovered like this, and now it is somewhere here. Although it is falling, but it but still it is a very high number because six point five percent of total workforce of India is very huge numbers. It is saying already that about nine percent, about eight percent is how much? Fifty three million. Okay, so consider what would be the six percent or six point five percent. If eight percent is fifty four million. Then one percent is how much? Fifty-four by eight, six six million. Uh, okay, so it is six million. Then we are we are almost seeing six point five. Those thirty-six and three thirty-nine percent. Thirty-nine million people are still in unemployed in India. It's it's a very large number, right? So let's move further now. So we understand the depth of this issue that about about thirty-five forty million people about forty million people so, do not have a job. to earn the living livelihood now this is really disturbing okay now exposing the claims how the author has exposed the claim okay now the percentage of data is spun out by government agency and policy think tanks are open to contestant uh, contestation but there are other indices other indices that uh, are proof that seriously contradict the tall claim of employment generation okay what it is saying that this this falling trend here it is this 6.5 from 9 to uh, from 8 to 6 now this this falling trend has been largely contested in india that oh we are doing good we are getting um, curbing the unemployment rate but there are other indices that says that these are just tall claims and not uh, uh, on the ground level not very realistic on the ground level look one such index is downward pressure unleashed by influx of over qualified youth aspirin aspirin as we what is it aspirin From aspiring, okay, 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 aspiring from middle and lower rung government jobs, which despite their modest pay are highly coveted, given the greater job security. Look at the keyword, greater job security ascribed to them. What is happening? A PhD student is applying for a post of pune. Okay, we don't need a PhD pune. Okay, what we need a PhD professor we need. We don't need a PhD pune. Why? Why this so? highly educ- uh, educated person will be serving a job that is that is not no relevance to his uh, his knowledge that is that is unfortunate right and this is what is happening that since middle class is in grip of this inflation and middle class has a lot of aspirations okay and middle class often studies a lot so the over qualified youth are filling forms for job which do not give them enough pay not the social respect but yes they give them what they give them job security and in this in this uncertain time job security matters so they are going on for that those things and this actually shows the the extent of in the extent of unemployment in india that a overly qualified professional a overly qualified youth is filling forms that is required for that requires the minimum qualification the minimum qualification as 10th pass or 12th pass and that person is maybe btech maybe mba maybe phd maybe anything else but so this is a really problematic situation okay now uh, there is a example it is given for 3500 post of N- railway ntpc non technical post okay uh, for um, railway non technical post there was about 1.25 crores application you you see this uh, sad state of things that only for 35000 post there are more than one there, there are 1.25 crores application this is a very huge number and and this was the sad state of unemployment that is in india fine now let's move further out of which post graduate degree holders were also there it is written here look a significant proportion was what they were pg degree holders and they are they are doing what they are uh, coming up for uh, post that is uh, uh, not according to their degree that is ntpc is not for post graduate people they are they are not for graduate people okay people may go and join it that is a different aspect altogether dis- different aspect but minimum qualification is not so high fine the created this created massive insecurity among section of candidate who meet the minimum eligibility but without being forced to compete but are being forced to compete with candidates having higher educational credentials what happens now 
what happens is the people who are just able to meet the minimum eligibility okay they have to compete with people that who have a lot of exposure to education who had a lot of experience who have a lot of knowledge base so this creates what this creates an uneven okay this creates an uneven playing field and this is never good in competition and this this thing only creates a thought cutting uh, uh, cutting uh, uh, competition right throat cutting competition why because people at this point who just meet the eligibility uh, eligibility criteria has to study a lot has to give a lot of effort to to part this inequality ladder okay uh, this gap uh, and in parting this gap it, this creates the main 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 reason for what main reason for competition fine with government job being limited obviously any government job will always be limited there is there is there is no possibility of government job being unlimited okay reducing the number due to contra contractualization and it is still being reduced in india why because we are we are going forward towards contra uh, contract based uh, based recruitment in government service and outsourcing several substantive posts intense competition persists ac across various categories of job obviously so what are the two reasons given for intense competition one highly pressure of highly educated people okay pressure of over qualified uh, candidates and second is what reducing job avenues okay okay let's move further explaining the scramble shockingly the advertisement for even handful of lower rung government job attract overwhelming number of applicants we have seen uh, here also that uh, about 35 for 35000 odd jobs there were how much there were 1.25 crore application this is a very sad state of things uh, happening in india in september the news reported highest mm -hmm. highlighted that among 18000 applicants about 42 post means for 42 post of pune gardner and cook we are having 18000 applications can you imagine this what is the percentage of people actually contesting for one seat it's it's humongous fine in uh, and that that was in himachal pradesh okay secretariat think of places like up secretariat or bihar secretariat or west bengal secretariat that are actually very very densely populated these these states are very densely populated and they have a very high tfr also then what does that mean that means that youth are very high there is a high population of youth there now think about the situation in those places for this 42 posts there would be one lakh applicants in these states if not one lakh there would be obviously there would be the, the application number not, will not be less than 50,000 sort figures right and there were hundreds of doctorate and other postgraduate applicants can you imagine this there are hundreds of people who have done doctorate and they are applying for what they are applying for pune gardner and cook post what is the utility of their study we are under utilizing their potential they are doctorates in a paper they know they know the heart and soul of that paper and they are doing what they are going for post like pune gardner cook what is why they are why they are choosing this why because there is none there is no scope for the doctor uh, no scope for their job uh, for their knowledge in the uh, in the current economic conditions right no avenues are there for them therefore they are trying to change their their uh, their uh, no abouts they are trying different fields earlier in march 2021 more than 27000 candidates with degrees such as ba bsc ma mcom ba engineering sector has applied for 13 positions from pune job in panipat district court can you imagine this for 13 positions there are 27000 candidates then for one 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 position how many will be there more than 2000 okay this is really sad state of mind for 62 post of messengers in uttar pradesh police there were about 93000 applications what did i say that for this much post look for 42 posts there was just 18000 in uttarakhand right in himachal pradesh but in as and when we move to uttar pradesh and bihar thing Bihar state it will uh, it will exponentially in, we, it will be exponentially increasing right look Uttar Pradesh police 93,000 application that uh, only for how many post 62 or post 37,000 were PhD holders look look here can you imagine this 37,000 people we have PhD holders well um, 37,000 PhD holders would have made a chunkable amount of teachers in India 50,000 were graduates okay this is ex this can be expected but not for this post messenger post but yes 50,000 were graduate but 3700 phd holders what are you what are what are we doing here this particular job vacancy required an educational question of class 5 and selection criteria comprised self declaration that candidate know how to ride a bicycle now see the see the paradox 
that a post that requires the minimum qualification criteria of class 5 and the know how of how to ride a bicycle okay attracted people who had a degree who had a phd degree who are phd holders 3700 or phd holders and about 50000 graduates isn't that shocking the discrete uh, disparate uh, scramble for government jobs stems into no uncertain terms for high job insecurity fine why why do we need why do people go for this government jobs there is there is one very important thing that is high job security right there is no high job insecurity means there is high job security there is no easy hire and fire policy once hired won't be fired once okay poor basic pay there is a good basic pay or even if it is poor then there are other ways by which they earn fine and long hours of work there is no long hour of work in government job it is fixed that okay and these these characteristics that it is saying that is high job insecurity high and fire poor basic pay long hour of job that characterizes bulk of job of private sector you understand now why people are refusing or why people are reluctant of um, private sector because of the high easy hire and fire policy a very 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 poor basic pay they give such a meager amount that it is only possible with that amount it is only possible to keep your body and soul together you cannot expect more from them fine and long hours of work they, they are very long hours of work undistracted there are no sundays in some private jobs okay fine there is nothing much here um, this are this now a spilling a spillover effect the ramification of this overall process is multifold okay the the challenge the ramifications are multifold at one level, enhanced deregulation of employment, employment and this, okay, spillover and crowding, look, spilling over and crowding lower skilled informal sector job, fine, this is, uh, spillover is leading to what, crowding of lower skilled informal sector jobs, okay, more qualified youth to crowd lower rung of government jobs, the highly qualified youth are doing what, the jobs of lower rung of uh, government, which require a know-how of Example, it is given no know how of riding a bicycle and a class 5th knowledge. So, this is really disturbing. The tendency itself is rendered into deep crisis. Yes, it is a state of deep crisis for those who uh, with lower educational qualification who strive for more modest government job and for whom such employment has traditionally been envisaged. For whom these, uh, um, these things, employment by, like these uh, mentioned uh, above, were envisaged for people who were not able to study a lot or who the situation did permitted for them to study okay who had lower educational qualification who belong to a very very modest section of society where education you know, for a long time was not possible for them it was there so that they could uh, develop themselves and the uh, coming generation won't have to uh, do the same thing but what is happening due to such a high um, uh, such a low availability of uh, employment avenues the people from highly skilled background are also uh, going for jobs that do not require any skill what are the other reasons reduced expenditure by health by state on health education and social sector as a whole also ensure inadequate employment generation despite the fact that demand for public good has been exp uh, growing exponentially what it is saying that a state is also exp uh, that a state is also expending less on education health and social sector fine but the uh, although Although the state, uh, although the demand for public good has increased, but the state is still expending less. This has also led to what? Now, less is, uh, spending on health, education and social sector means less employing uh, people who means uh, we have less work uh, man, uh, man force for those uh, for uh, in those sector. That means less employment, which means state of unemployment in India. Fine. A closer look at higher education sector itself reveals a study increase in number of student applicants okay in higher education also what had happened number of student has increased now if there is the more number of a student so obviously there should be more number of teacher but what is happening new teachers are not recruited and old teachers are only teaching them so two things are at stake here first new ideas are not coming into institution and second unemployment is increasing fine here it is also written this scenario naturally calls for more job recruitment of qualified teachers okay However, successive government continue to restrict and even delay recruitment of teachers to existing public funded higher educational institutions. Example, it has given very good example. University of Delhi, 4500 teachers posts are being filled by ad hoc teachers and appointments to permanent positions being stalled repeatedly. You are, can you imagine this? 4500 teachers are ad hoc 
they don't they don't have a permanent job why they will teach uh, in a better way they won't be teaching in the better way this is actually happening our education system okay now let's move further highly skilled workforce serving the teacher defensively uh, look what happens that number one thing is what government is actually not recruiting new teachers and if it recruits new teacher then the uh, the already working teacher will do what they will not allow them to settle fine so this is also a problem now we'll read that mm, let's see large highly skilled workforce serving teacher defensively holds on to insecure temporary job contracts as more eligible fresh candidates enter to the job market okay they are holding their post they are not being retired they become contractual there in the university and these things leads to non-entry of the new youth fine one more thing is there arbitrary in enhancement of educational qualification for recruitment into better paid government jobs as well as new criteria for admission into professional training institution what is happening that the educational qualification is being been enhanced and this is leading to what this is leading to again low skilled availability skill pool availability is missing so what will happen the uh, the post advertised for even will remain unfilled look entry level teaching positions now mandatorily requires a phd degree in addition to master's degree and a ugc net qualification you understand for being a teacher entry level teacher in universities you need to be a phd scholar you need a phd degree not a scholar you need a phd degree um, uh, obviously a master degree and a ugc net qualification you understand now so this is a very high this is very enhanced kind of a requirement for a entry level teacher position it's shown okay as number of seats and vacancies fail to augment we see a systematic effort to ruthlessly eliminate growing number of aspirants using astute test and arbitrary criteria okay so since the number of um, people are increasing and the number of job aspirants are increasing and jobs are decreasing so what is happening the the criteria uh, the criteria are are being more are become more arbitrary and tests are being more more subjective and on more tough fine so this is one of the problem you see this this not only is in job sector you see in iits in pmt in is examinations in anywhere uh, where there is a lot of population these two things are are um, will come out this uh, a very vague kind of testing you are testing an engineering student who aspires to be engineering the concepts of engineering why so you must test him on concepts of 12th standard or you are you are uh, you are uh, like in pmt you actually uh, the people go on to actually ask the questions from medicine or questions from highly technical um, uh, technical subjects that are yet to be taught to them so th this is doing what this is increasing the competition fine now this these these all arguments shows that how skill india is hollow it is not skilling why because the major problem is what skill mismatch okay now it is concluding that economy that creates fewer job in one is the one which over works some of its some while rendering large number of unemployed means look economy will function anyhow whether you create jobs or not not economy will function fine and if it is not creating job then what is happening what is happening is the one who were in job are being over pressured fine and the other who are not in job are being unemployed so what is the solution it is before solution it is also saying that a tired india and an unemployed india are simply two sides of the same coin tired india means those who are overworked overloaded and unemployed india means those who are seeking employment but are not getting uh, what are they they are simply two sides of the same coin the youth needs to realize that the fulfillment of dignified employment cannot happen in isolation but linked to how sea of highly exploitative laboring masses around them are uh, also guaranteed their access to basics education health and livelihood a transformation of circumstances awaits near sensibility and sense of solidariness solidarities fine it is saying that okay we have to we have to increase or we have to create a very sustainable environment or ecosystem for increasing job avenues in india the present system is not properly paced or properly placed for this uh, for this inequality to now uh, vanish fine now let's see this one this is uh, this is a more of a finding type of article poverty has risen but income inequality fell three reasons are there i'll come directly to it now this is a kind of paradox why it is a kind of paradox because in in a pandemic poverty as as poverty has 
risen income inequality should also have risen but it has not been that okay there are three matrices government transfer there are three ways by which household and uh, that that or say there are three sources of household income government transfer business uh, profits and labor income okay now government transfers are more or less same and it is very small chunk so it uh, it it can be ignored fine uh, and the second one is um, your business income look for rural or for share of here it is written change in share of income okay for lower rank it is business income is uh, minus 6.7 percent for higher one it is minus 9.38 percent and your uh, labor income for lower it is 5.41 percent for for higher for, uh, for higher level uh, for higher class of people it is minus 24.93 percent what does this suggest this suggests that the business people were more affected why because it was a contact intensive pandemic okay so contact intensive anything that was related to business like anyone have a shop or any apparel business or anything like that or what very much impacted again labor look the lower uh, lower rank of society is basically in manufacturing and agriculture fine these will go on but the higher rank of society is in services that was not wanted during the pandemic so there was this source of inequality so what would have what happened look this was the earlier inequality fine what have what we expected that this should have been like this what happened this remained somewhere here or up or down a bit but it moved a lot so actually it decreased but poverty increase this is what is written in the article give it a read it is not very per se very important yes you have three things here government uh, transfer business and your labor part we can use this time we did it in our answer fine now ukraine the pawn in the power game again and again i have been uh, info i have been for telling about this point that this is the this is the way in which us has dealt with the entire world if they do something that is for democracy other is uh, if other do something that is that they are dictatorship yeah, okay let's read, give it a read washington now like the, what has happened russia has attacked ukraine and ukraine is in danger and now washington would now like the world to believe that it is entirely to protect the democracy and defeat the dictatorship okay what usa will and we see that usa is uh, taking the same stance now also that india is not protecting democracy india is standing with china and russia india should stand with us either you are with us or we will put sanctions on you and all those things it is saying that that means washington or usa wants us to believe that uh, this fight is entirely to protect democracy and defeat dictatorship the war is the result of cold hard nosed calculation of us to prevent the rise of large power in east with huge natural resources including those critical for promoting green technologies fine this is what the author expect as the root cause of what as a root cause of why russia or the east should not rise because if they rise they have they have critical resources for promoting green technologies and all of the oil reserves of usa and all of the energy reserves of usa will go in vain if we uh, if the east is able to uh, able to promote and develop new green technologies so let's move further and what happened also vladimir putin is the person who will answer to any uh, aggression called to him so this and he, uh, why is so because he believes that the greatest geopolitical catastrophe of the century was dissolution of soviet fine now let's see challenges to us claim us is claiming that what they are doing is liberation and what other are doing is annexation fine so what are the challenges to it 1953 let's see historically 1953 cia toppled the democratically elected government of where in iran and placed his his their person uh, uh, pahlavi on the uh, the last shah of iran on the throne what does this ensure to us twin pillars of policy arming iran and south and what they they did wait wait what does this helped him uh, uh, by placing mohammad reza pahlavi on the thrones of iran how does us got helped uh, the there was uninterrupted flow of oil from gulf okay and uh, what else did us did it uh, acted on the twin pillars of policy supporting and arming iran and saudi arabia today we see iran and saudi arabia are are at loggerheads fine but both supply both used to supply oil to iran uh, to usa you understand this thing means usa is giving weapons to both the parties and saying that the other party is your enemy 
and you do one thing you fight with him i'll give you weapon and in return you give me oil they give weapon to uh, iran for say iran will give them dollars and for uh, they will also and uh, when iran will supply oil the dollar will come back to iran so in this way there is a kind of barter going between the both the uh, at both front with iran also and saudi arabia also and in both the case us is at profit fine so and uh, making us green dominance to safeguard its oil supplies as i have said that uh, when gulf is supplying oil then us oil are safe for future similarly when in 1963 there was a you know, resolution tabled in united nation to cut off south africa uh, apartheid government of south africa after math of a sharp uh, massacre by police fine us voted against it why because it considered or it give priority to its economic interest on human interest and now us is teaching us what that humanity matters and india should uh, not stand in uh, the same line as russia and china and india should look the world with a big, bigger angle with a uh, uh, this thing with a bigger picture and all those ethical kind of thing the only fact that is applicable in international relation is national interest national security and peace and harmony and when all three things are met then the relation established now what we see here na it was the national interest of usa for its economy to thrive in they let the people of uh, they let uh, apartheid practice continue in uh, south africa similarly in libya also how corporate interest and us foreign policy are intervened they have shown uh, the same thing in 2011 libya operation also that their corporate interest and their foreign policies are intervened and again the same thing happened in chile fine when the democratic elected marxist government in americas uh, was killed by a movement that was uh, that was sponsored by cia in 1973 you look right from 1950s to 1960s to now 1970s usa has taken the same stance its economic policy its corporate policies and foreign policies are intervening okay and uh, one cannot cannot forget what how us arming of pakistan against democracy of india is the best example of that challenge fine how they have armed pakistan washington today claims that it is the champion of democracy virtually every soldier of democratic india who died in wars with autocratic pakistan was killed by arms and ammunition supplied by usa yes usa supplied arms and ammunition and money to pakistan and what did pakistan did they killed our soldiers and now usa is telling us what it is not telling it is preaching us what humanity matters where was the humanity when indian soldiers were killed on account of their arms ammunition and funding pakistan has killed our people okay although we are at a winning point but we have lost important human life that is more important winning and losing will go on but human lives are lost no, without any reasons okay so let's move further a powerful defense lobby fine you understand this defense defense sector of us is one of the silent sector of its economy the more the more the world is at war the more the peace is disturbed in the world the more powerful usa becomes why because its arms sector its, uh, its defense lobby becomes more and more powerful look here it is written today war in ukraine has been largely brought about by the us bid to perpetuate a unipolar world us again wants to dominate this world fine it wants to create a unipolar world a critical one is immensely powerful usa defense lobby washington sells of billions of dollar of weapon to saudi arabia where steered by its defense industry it even washington led to sell countries weapon that do not require them it is selling weapon to nepal what is the requirement of weapons to nepal or for small countries there is no nothing but still it will sell today a sudden withdrawal of us from afghanistan look what happens us sells to some agent and agent sell to country now what happened us us is out from afghanistan now these agents who had who had a stock piled of stock piled the weapons of usa for uh, for selling to these countries like afghanistan pakistan and all those uh, type of countries now do not have the weapon, uh, now have these stock piles but they do not have the market so they have they have done what they have captured a new market in europe and as peter kuznick has said what is very a big business for usa it is correct what is actually a very big business for usa and when this dust will settle europe will actually become what it will become a very important and lucrative market for us weapon germany has already announced to double its uh, defense budget from 50 billion or, or uh, euros to 100 billions next year fine nato expansion 
it was the uh, in my opinion and so is in the author's opinion that it is the it is the it is the problem created by nato it is not the problem that uh, russia has created it is more a problem that nato has created because why nato has not lived up to its expectation it has not lived up to its promise it has uh, given to mikhail gorbachev that it would it won't expand yes that does not give russia a reason to invade ukraine fine and to kill so many people that is illegitimate on part of russia and that must be condemned although india is not condemning it with their reasons and i have always said national security national interest and peace and tranquility right based on these three things our diplomats has taken the best stance but as far as the war it should be condemned india has also condemned the war war should not be there but it was the it was the doing of nato that led to this crisis okay look after the end of cold war there was no basic reason for nato to exist east was shattered nato was not needed now but what happened nato kept on expand, expanding itself it asked first poland and all those countries uh, to become its part at that point of time russia was at its lowest so it is not responded and then it asked ukraine to become its part but not this, uh, uh, yeah, belarus to become its part russia invaded belarus now it asked ukraine to become its part in uh, ukraine wanted to become its part in 2014 russia invaded ukraine took off uh, crimea now after that it uh, ukraine again tried to become one part of the nato and what did it do and what is happening you can see fine so it is all a result of broken promise from nato there is no reason for nato to exist now but it is still existing and this is a problem okay and to uh, and the author says to end the war washington to accept the neutrality of ukraine washington should come forward and say that no ukraine should not be a part of nato and we accept the uh, accept the neutrality of ukraine okay it should uh, what what us should do it should try to broke peace between ukraine and russia not like an agent who who keeps on selling his his uh, products his war mongering products to uh, both uh, especially to ukraine fine it is also it will also be selling its product to other countries who think that their democracy will be in danger like germany like france fine so these are the problems and the the main culprit in this whole uh, event or in this whole episode remains us it is not russia it is not ukraine ukraine is just a ground where this great games of um, post cold war has taken place fine profit over public health let me make a point very 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 small point here that uh, it is related to covid relaxations covid trips waiver uh, dense relativity of trips waiver given in covid vaccination things right three or four points are there let's uh, say it uh, what are the waiver weaknesses only covid 19 vaccines are covered this is one of the major handicap second the draft of waiver proposes waivers uh, waive only patent and not other ip rights means once you get the pay, pay, uh, waiver from patent also there are other intellectual property rights that are that has to be res, uh, respected fine that is the second point even the issue of patent the waiver draft appear to be old wine in a new bottle it is just cover, com, covering compulsory licensing and nothing else i have dealt with compulsory licensing you you uh, check it in my previous newspaper analysis or get or do a google search for it fine uh, apart from that eligible members uh, there are high, too many conditions for eligible members and uh, like they should not have exported um, there was some figures i don't i'm not getting that here there was somewhere yes 10% of world exports of covid-19 vaccine in 2021 uh, they should not be there it should be less than that and these things are there and the fifth one is uh, while uh, obligations of member protect undisclosed information submitted before drug regulator to claim marketing approval in the present context right so fifth one is simple that protection of other trade secret covered under article uh, no need to remember this article under trips are are not taken care of history has repeated itself the same has happened in hiv aids case in uh, when broke out in africa and today also what had the developed countries serving inter- interest of their pharmaceutical firms are all set to triumph once again over the public health concern on humanity find this is this is further than who wto relevance and credibility and credibility india has surrendered and will end up being on the wrong side of the history it is incumbent on the government to explain why it accepted the strikingly withered down version of trips waiver yes to some extent it is right the the article to some extent is right why it is right because yes government has a kind of surrendered to who wto's negotiation but yes again 
we have to see that i think in my opinion it is indian government has accepted his right but the what india would have done india could not have just let this talk go on forever uh, and meanwhile our population would have died india is india is trying to get something out of it and then renegotiate and get more things out of it this this is the india's viewpoint here yes as far as humanity and public health concerns are there yes we have failed as a as an entire global citizen wto has failed and the entire global citizen tree has failed because even if one even if one life is lost or say or phrase it like this with availability of vaccine even if we are losing one life that is a dent to our credibility as humans okay so with this we come to an and no no there is one more article is there let me see the uh, okay the move to is voting for overseas citizen uh, it is very easy article just read the gist after passing off uh, ropa act 2010 and i nri who stayed abroad beyond 6 month have been able to vote but only in person means they have to come at pol- polling station where they have been enrolled as an overseas electoral okay so they have to come to the polling station where they have been uh, they have been there as a polling uh, they have been enrolled as a overseas electoral however only a very low proportion of overseas resident actually registered or turned up to vote yes this is the thing they will not come why because there are cost constraints visa constraints and all those things fine this has uh, what uh, the proviso of having to visit of the polling booth in uh, person has discouraged elig- uh, eligible voters from exercising their mandate fine the conduct of election rules was amended in 2016 to allow service voter to use electronic etp bs electronically transmitted postal ballot system under this the system postal ballots are sent electronically look the postal um, ballot will be sent electronically email to person and he will fill up the choices he will he will put a uh, put his choice and then seal it fine and send by post this is the this is the mechanism the voter can then register the mandate on the ballot and send it back by ordinary mail eci is proposed to extend the facility to overseas voter now till date it is not with the overseas voter it is only to the service people but now election commission of india has proposed this to extend to the faci- this facility to overseas voter this is the news we'll see how and uh, in what manner it develops but for now this is the condition fine and with this uh, we actually come to the end of today's newspaper analysis yes this was a very very uh, big newspaper today it was a very long read but fine i enjoyed it i hope you also enjoyed it so let me see if anything else is remaining we have done almost all the important news yes so with this we end the analysis section as well yes it was a long read i enjoyed it i hope you also enjoyed it okay so friends i really hope that you like this video अगर आपको यह वीडियो पसंद आया है तो इसे थम्स अप दें साथ ही इसे अपने दोस्तों में परिवार में शेयर करें हमें इंस्टाग्राम पर भी फॉलो करें हमारे चैनल को सब्सक्राइब करें और बेल आइकन को तुरंत से भी पहले दबा दें ताकि हमारी सारी वीडियोस की नोटिफिकेशन सबसे पहले आप तक पहुंच जाए आप अपने सजेशन को कमेंट बॉक्स में लिखें हम जल्द से जल्द उसे इंप्लीमेंट करने की कोशिश करेंगे आप सब स्वस्थ रहें सुखी रहें खुश रहें सबकी केयर करें और मन लगाकर पढ़ते रहें जय हिंद